In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the MD5 Deep program to pull an MD5 checksum off of a file in Windows. You can use pretty much any version of Windows for this. Uh, the only variant is whether or not you use the normal executable or the 64-bit executable. So the first thing you need to do is you need to download the MD5 Deep zip file, which is in your course shell. And here's my file right here and what I want to do is I want to extract that file. Now I'm just going to extract it onto my desktop uh, just for simplicity I'll just keep it here so when I choose extract all it says it's going to put it in C users administrator desktop MD5 deep 4.4 okay so that works out pretty good because when I click extract here's a folder with these files in it now you'll notice that when I choose to extract it here it made this MD5 deep 44 folder and inside of there is also an MD5 deep 44 folder. It's really inside of that where the files live. So you'll notice there's an MD5 deep 64 and we'll use that in just a second. So here's what we need to do. I'm going to close this out. These programs run from the command prompt. So I'm going to open a command prompt right here and it's important to know that we start in a particular path. In my case, I'm starting in C Users Administrator. So what I want to do is I want to make it to my desktop. So I'm going to change directory with a CD command, and then I'm going to start typing in desktop. And if you want to be fancy, you can actually hit the tab key when you're close enough, and it'll fill in the rest of whatever file or folder uh, you might be looking for. So CD space desktop will take me into C users administrator desktop. Now as you're moving around in the command prompt, there's another command that's going to be useful to you and that's the dir command. And this command will list the contents of the current directory that you're in. So um, this would list me all of the contents of the directory, but I know what I'm looking for. I'm going to CD inside of the MD5 deep folder and then I can hit tab again and it'll finish that out for me and now I'm in this folder and so if I dir here I'll notice the same thing that I saw when I open this in file explorer there's another folder of the same name inside there okay so what I can do is I can cd into md5 deep again and this is really the folder where everything lives if I do a dir now you'll see the md5 deep executable, the MD5 Deep 64, which is the one that I'm going to be using for my 64-bit version of Windows. If one doesn't work, you can try the other if you don't know if you're 32 or 64-bit. But more than likely, you're probably using a 64-bit processor at this point. So there's all kinds of different executables in here. For our lab today, we're going to use the MD5 Deep 64 executable. So one of the things I want to do is I want to be able to check uh, this file and make sure it hasn't been changed. Cool thing about an MD5 checksum is it guarantees that every bit in that file is as it was. It's like a fingerprint. It's always going to be unique for those same files. As long as the file hasn't been changed in any way, that file will always return the same checksum. So one of the things you could do is you could do MD5 deep 64 and then space and then you put in the file name that you want to check so I'm gonna go with changes.txt in this case and when I run this command you'll notice right here is a long string of characters if you run the md5 deep command on the changes.txt file you should get the exact same set of characters that I got because bit for bit that should be an identical file now something I'm going to do just to kind of prove it, I'm going to do a notepad of that changes.txt file and here is what that file happens to be. I'm going to simply put in one space at the very beginning and I'm going to close and save that same file. And I'm going to run the same command again, the md5 deep on my changes.txt and you would expect that that should be a completely different checksum it is completely and fundamentally changed that file. So if I run this again, you'll notice there's nothing in common here. This is a completely new checksum that we've received back from this command. Another thing that might be kind of interesting is 
What if we change the name on a file? Would that change the contents of the file? So I'm going to do the rename command and I'm going to rename uh, changes.txt to new changes.txt. Simply changing the name of that file. Now I'll do my md5 deep 64 on the new changes.txt file. Now we have changed the file because we've changed its name, but the contents of the file is exactly as it was and you'll notice that even though I've changed the name of that file the checksum will give the exact same result here as it did up here because we haven't changed the contents of the file the name is stored differently and in a different place than the actual contents of a file so fundamentally this original changes.txt and new changes.txt are fundamentally the same file one more thing I can do is if I wanted to create a brand new file I can do that and I could put it in this directory and I could run this command against it so how about I notepad um, new file dot text what this will do is it'll launch the notepad program can't find a file with that name so I'm gonna create a new one this is my file and I can close this and save it and when I do an MD5 deep on um, new file dot text it will return the results of the checksum of that file so you can create files and you could create one just the same way I did here with notepad uh, you can name it whatever you want even any extension you want and as long as the contents are identical it will return this as the result so that's an introduction to using MD5 deep um, hopefully that is helpful for your assignment if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email and let me know.